In this video, we will go over how to draw ellipses, arcs, and curves. Let's start out by right-clicking the blank space in the TurboCAD workspace to bring up the Customize dialog. With the Workspace dialog open, check the Circle Ellipse toolbar, the Arc toolbar, and the Curve toolbar. Let's get right to it and start with the Ellipse tools, which are located on the right side of the Circle Ellipse toolbar. The standard ellipse tool places two points along the circumference of the ellipse as if you were marking the corners of a circumscribed rectangle. The rotated ellipse requires four mouse clicks. Once to mark the center, the next to create the angle, and then the major radius followed by the minor. Like most other tools, this geometry can be constructed by entering specific values into the inspector bar. Let's try it. With the rotated ellipse tool active, first click somewhere in the drawing area to mark the center. Now tab into the inspector bar, input a major radius of 3, an angle of 30, and a minor radius of 1, then finish the operation by hitting enter on your keyboard. The fixed ratio ellipse is constructed with two mouse clicks, one defining the center, then a second click along the circumference. The major and minor radii are set by a fixed ratio defined by a numeric value. For example, a ratio of 2 would mean that the major radius is twice that of the minor. For each of the ellipse tools, there is a similar tool that creates elliptical arcs. These can be found on the right side of the arcs toolbar. Just like the ellipse tool, the elliptical arc tool starts by defining the corners of the extents of the ellipse, then defining the start and end angle, moving counterclockwise to create the arc. Same with the rotated and fixed ratio elliptical arcs. And if we take a look at the first three tools on the left side of the arc toolbar, you'll notice that they are similar to the first three tools on the circle toolbar that we went over in a previous video. With the additional step of defining the start and end angle to construct the arc. So far all the arc tools we have taken a look at create an arc based on an ellipse or circle. Arcs can also be created by defining three points along the circumference. Notice the 1, 2, 3 and 1, 3, 2 on the icons of these tools. This is their order of operations. For both tools, you first enter the start point. After that, they differ slightly. For the 1, 2, 3 arc, the second defines the radius and the third click defines the endpoint. And for the 1, 3, 2, you create the endpoint before the radius. The remaining arc tools deal with different tangencies. Again, these are very similar to the tangent circle tools we went over in the previous video. I will go over each of these tools, starting with the tangent to line. Arc tangent to line creates an arc by first picking a line that will be tangent to this arc. After defining the radius, you then place what now looks like a circle along the line you have picked. Once this circle has been placed, the start and end point is input with the end point being counterclockwise from the start point. Arc tangent to arc or curve behaves the same, but in this case the arc will be drawn tangent to an existing curve. Arc tangent to three arcs constructs a circle by choosing an inside or outside tangency of three arcs. And once the circle has been constructed, the start and end point can then be chosen to construct the arc. Arc tangent to entities works the same, but in this case line segments can be selected as well as curves when constructing the circle before the start and end point of the arc are input. Now arc tangent to two entities works a little different. You start the operation by selecting two entities you would like the arc to be tangent to. A third click defines the radius. Then a fourth click chooses the side of the circle as if it were trimmed at the intersections of the tangent entities. Now let's take a look at the curve toolbar. The first three tools, spline by control points, spline by fit points, and bezier curve all create continuous curves defined by control points or knots. You will hear me mention both knots and nodes. Knots refer to the point along the curve which controls the curvature, and nodes refer to the UI element that controls them. Let's try drawing a spline by control points. Choose spline by control points from the curve toolbar. But before we draw anything else, let's open the properties dialog and under curve check show frame. Now go ahead and draw a spline by clicking in the drawing area. Notice that in addition to the curve, there is a polyline connecting the endpoints. This is helpful in seeing how your data input affects the construction of the curve. 
After placing several control points, double click or hit the finish flag to complete the operation. Now choose the edit tool from the left side toolbar or pop up and select the spline. You will notice several blue nodes appear at the control points. Try grabbing the different nodes and moving them around, paying close attention to how this affects the construction of the curve. Multiple nodes can be selected by drawing a fence around the nodes you would like to select. Now let's switch to a fit point spline by right clicking and choosing Edit Fit Points from the local menu. Notice how the nodes now appear along the spline at the same points as the knots. Now right click and choose Properties from the local menu, then turn off Show Frame under Curve Properties so we can see what's going on. Notice the green handles near each endpoint of the spline? This helps control the curvature of the knots near either end of the spline. You can place additional knots by right clicking along the curve and choosing Add Knot. Nodes can also be deleted. Try selecting a node, then deleting it by choosing Delete Nodes in the local menu or inspector bar. Deleting the node removes the knot and affects the curvature set by the remaining knots along the curve. Now let's take a look at Bezier curves. We can best illustrate how the knots affect the curvature by drawing a wave-like pattern with tight oscillations. Notice how the curve passes through the midpoint of each segment of the frame? This is because each knot is set to have equal curvature and until changed that curvature will be the same between each knot. If we select the curve with the edit tool, we will notice the blue nodes representing the knots and the green handles which control the curvature. I can turn off the frame so we can better see what's going on here. Notice that when I grab the green handles they are adjusted evenly on both sides. Again, this is because the knots are set to have equal curvature. If we look down to the inspector bar, we will see there are three different types of control points. Equal curvature at point, non-equal curvature at point, and non-smooth at point. With non-equal chosen, grabbing the different handles will change the curvature of that side only, while the angle of the other side is changed to keep the curve smooth. If non-smooth is chosen, then both the angle of the curve and the curvature can be changed with one side not affecting the other. All three control methods can be used to edit the same curve, and although there is no specific setting for each individual knot, switching control methods will not affect a knot unless its handles are adjusted. And this will conclude our video presentation. For more great videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you have not already, download the latest version of TurboCAD from TurboCAD.com today.